All right, so it's been far too long since I've gotten to play Skellige, Druids, Alchemy, Potions, whatever you want to call it. And I missed it a lot. So I wanted to go back today and play some of that here. And yeah, it's been like six weeks since I've played it. There were a couple changes to the list that I made from the previous version, given the fact that there was a provision nerf to Gedniff. I think it was a much needed provision nerf from 13 to 14 because the scenario just puts out so many points in such a quick period of time. I don't think any scenario can match the tempo. Obviously, Masquerade Ball is really good for removal, but but sheer tempo, I think Gedneth takes the win with that. So, you know, nerf was required, but it doesn't make the deck any less playable. In fact, I think it's just as strong as before. Really, just a couple minor changes in the list. And um, I did play a few games today. We'll go into the evidence bank to show you guys. I didn't get to play as much as I wanted to play because... Here, we'll look at it here. So we played four games. We got four wins for you guys today. So that's pretty much it. If I had more time to play, I'd definitely play more. But the server reset or maintenance, whatever the case, really affected my ability to play this morning. So that's basically it. But so far, undefeated. And a lot of these games where I landslide, I do think that this deck will get you to pro rank no problem if you're looking to push the pro at this point in the season. And I do think you can win games in pro. So that's pretty much it. I think you could even climb to 2,500 if you really just grinded the deck for sure. But uh, we'll get into the deck list here. So Gedneth remains part of my deck. It uh, progresses whenever we play a Druid. I love playing around scenarios, so tons of fun for me. On the prologue, spawn a Crow Clan Preacher, which is going to be one of these here. Whenever you play an alchemy card, boost self by one, bonded boost self by two instead. So we have a lot of alchemies that we're going to be playing in the deck. It just makes sense to have a few of those out there. And then when we play our first druid, we spawn and play a crow's eye rhizome. So it's this one here. Basically plays for six points because we'll have a druid on the row. So we'll spawn three crows. And then we get the added bonus of the fact that this is alchemy proccing the crow clan preachers. So try and get down the preachers first before we obviously get down... This sort of stuff, right? You want to play preachers from hand to proc the scenario if possible because we're going to be getting a couple alchemies from the scenario. And then chapter 2, of course, when we play our second druid, hopefully the second of the Crow Clan preachers like I mentioned, we'll be getting a Marjorome, which is this one here. So damage a unit by 3, then boost it by 9. Uh, yeah, boost it by 9. So it plays for a net 6 technically, but we do get the passive heal whenever we play an alchemy card heal random ally by one so we get that added ability here and of course we get the bonded ability from the crow clan preachers so with all things checked we're getting tons of points and what i like to do in around the time that i'm playing alchemy cards is i like to take a little bit of self wound right because we can go we can click the little half ruse get rain on their side of the playing field or whatever the case may be and then go and play our alchemies heal the half ruse and there's a pretty big you know, ceiling for that, a pretty big buffer because we're damaging ourselves by four. So we can crank out quite a few alchemies before these get healed up again, which is ideal. I often see it misplayed. I'm just really pointing it out here because you don't want to go and take swallows on damaged cards. You don't really want to go and, you know, take froths off the mushy truffle on damaged cards because you want to benefit as much as possible from the leader's passive, right? Really important there. But yeah, scenario plays for tons of points. You can't go wrong with it. Fakusha, even with a provision nerf at 14, it's still one of the best cards in Skellige, in my opinion. It's one of the cards that you can put in basically any archetype within Skellige, and you wouldn't be wrong. So if you don't have this card, make this card. Deploy, play Skellige unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less, and give it doomed. Then spawn rain in the opposite row with a duration equal to unused provisions. So unlike a lot of other decks that I put together, this deck specifically, you're actually looking for bronze cards more than often with Fakusha. So you're looking for like the Crow Clan Preachers or the half Halfrus. Once they've been bonded, you can pull them back and even play them for 10 points. It's pretty wild, right? So you want that because then you're going to be getting 6 turns of rain, which is technically 12 damage, right? If they don't have any armor or shields or anything like that. So imagine bringing a card back that's going to play for 20 points, being this card. Then you have, or this card even if you're desperate, right? You have a couple good options. Then getting tons of removal reach as well. It just, it's really hard to match the tempo of a card like this. And it's one of the strongest cards in the game. I think when you play it that way, one card doing that much is just wild. 
And of course, I want to play into the greed. I want to get rid of things that are going to be a little bit more difficult for us to get rid of because we don't have a lot of direct control tools. So Karathi Heatwave makes the world of a difference being able to banish a unit or artifact, getting rid of a scenario or getting rid of a really tall unit or just something that could have potential engine value. Let's say if we miss some removal, right? It could be like a Cirrus Fearless. It could be a Sea Jackal at 30 points. It could be a Melusine. It could be Old Spear Tip, right? There's so many different things that you can go and you could take a Heat Wave on. Sigvald, right? So definitely good to have. Masquerade Ball, there's another one, right? And uh, Mushy Truffle, a lot of the deck plays around Mushy Truffle, so this is kind of an auto-include. I wouldn't say there's a substitution for this. You want to have it. It has Resilience, which makes it a lot easier to strategize with because we have the Dwims that play into this. And realistically, we're going to be using these on this more often than we're going to be using it on Gedneth. I have two of them, so obviously Gedneth would be a backup target. However, you get more points from doing so on the Mushy Truffle. So we can refresh the location's order, even on the next round with the Resilience carryover and get to play another Alchemy card off of it. So you can imagine how that starts to spiral when we have these bonded, or even tripled, right? Like triple bonded or whatever case. And we go and we play even more Alchemy cards. It's just gonna spit out points. And again, it's uh, just a killer combo. So really good to have there. And again, I like to run double tall punish so having morgvarg in this deck really makes a difference too if you're playing into the colgrim matchup a lot of you guys uh, have been complaining about that recently you've been facing a lot of colgrim this one's really good because if we miss our defender or sorry our purify here with the peller for a defender we can just remove it outright with the morgvarg so it definitely helps us there right or we purify one we kill one other, the other one down because they'll make a copy of it with the Letho. And then we just heat wave the Colgrim and just get that match over with, right? So that's kind of the idea with this here is just punishing something that's very tall. And it does a phenomenal job with that. Now, Crow Mother's in the deck. I've seen some people drop it for Sigvald or whatever the, the other play is. I didn't really want to run a hybrid. I actually really like Crow Mother. I think it's a good proactive play. And I think we need something like that in the deck. It's also an alternative discard target if we want to keep a lot of the cards that we pull into. And we just want to get that extra discard off. Because when we play an alchemy card, it's going to summon itself from the graveyard to a row. So I like this because it helps set up more units on a row for froth. And it's good carryover. So if you can get this out early, all the better. If you don't get this out early, at least it's a point slam. You get the four plus the two and two, and it puts three units on the row for the truffle. So it's a preference thing for me, at least. I just really like playing it that way. It has a druid tag, which helps for Geddeneth if we're running low. Let's say we miss these for whatever reason. We need to have a couple more druids in the deck. As you can see, we're pretty lean on them. We got the two here. We've got the three, and we've got the four with Bride of the Sea. So keep that in mind, right? Really important. Now, Coral, Burna, this is a very common package. I'll use this in just about every Skellige deck that I'm playing right now. We have the ability to draw a card, discard a card. Whenever you discard a card, damage a random enemy by two. So we want to play this first, ideally, if we have both of them in hand. And then we want to follow up with the Burna, draw two cards, discard the same amount of cards. So, again, you want to take Burna for the two discards, not the one discard. So make sure you have eight or less cards in hand when you play Burna, right? So we can get the maximum damage on this and the maximum look through our deck for what we need and hopefully finding our discard targets being either Crow Mother, Morkvarg, or one of the two or both of the skirmishers, right? So that's kind of the idea there, just maximizing the amount of points we get, the amount of points we take away from them with the play that we have. Now, Bride of the Sea is an extremely flexible card. Most often, we're going to be pulling for something like the Stribog, and it's or the Phrase Blessing. It's one of the main reasons why I have it here. You know, we don't have Sigdruff as right, which is fine, because there's not really like a lot of stuff we want to pull back in the top end. It's mainly just the Brawn stuff, so it plays around that kind of strategy. But this card's very valuable. I think that if we can play Bride of the Sea into a Stribog, then we can roll another Alchemy off the Stribog, and then let's say these are bonded here. We're just giving like the extra eight points from having just two of these on the playing field from doing double proc. And if that's also proccing into the scenario, like it's just ridiculous amount of points. Like 
So that's kind of the way I play it. Delirium's a good option for control as well if we need it. But worst case scenario, we have no shortage of bronze with the swallows that we have. And then of course the froths that are off of the truffle because those are also going to be for provision alchemy carts. So that's the way I have it. An alternative to this end here would obviously be putting in something like the Giga Scorpion. And this is something that you could do. If you said, I don't want to gamble and play Stribog and I don't like Delirium's random damage, we'll take these two out, put this in, and then maybe dump one of these two or whatever the case and just put in like a Marjoram or something in the four. Like it's a really easy alternative. It's just a matter of preference. This is the way that I like to play, but I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong answer in this case. A lot of it comes down to your matchups too, but I've been fairly lucky with this so far. I think this card comes in clutch. And uh, of course, Freya's Blessing is very important. Play a Bronze Skeleton unit from your graveyard, give it Doomed. Keep in mind, it does give it Doomed, so you can't use it on the same card twice. So we're looking for two targets specifically. We're looking for the Preachers and we're looking for the half Ruse. If we have these both in hand round three, that's great, we pull these. If we don't have these because we had to play them in round one because of an awkward hand or whatever the case, we can bring them back. And that's just to make sure that we get our scenario without having to run additional druids that we don't actually want to play in the deck to make the tags work. So I don't really think that cutting Freyas is ideal just because of the shortage of the druids that we have in the deck, if that makes sense, right? Especially because we can't bring this one back or anything like that. So it's really just surrounding the bronzes that we have. And again... It's lean, so you gotta be able to support it with something here. Talked about Dwim, resetting a chapter to the final. So, like, we could reset this to the final, and then if we play a Druid, we get another Marjoram, fine. Or we can do Truffle. It really depends on the situation. At least we have options for both. Swallow's just a really inexpensive card. If you don't want to go tall, you can always go wide. But... I just find it's a, it's a little bit safer to do something like this. So you can go with... Like this here, you could swap them out if you wanted to go for Marjoram's Shore. You could go for the Rhizomes if I can find them. It's because I got the, the mic in front of my face. <laughs> you can go for these. Like, if it's an alchemy tag, it'll work. Like, you could go for Tears of Siren, sure. I just wanted to have Swallows because in round one, we can boost a Crow off the Uroboros or a Crow off the Crow Mother. In round three, we can just, you know, boost a crow off the scenario's rhizome. So it feels like we're not really going unnecessarily tall, and it's just playing for the six plus whatever heal value we get, whereas marginal might not always be as beneficial, right? So, I don't know. It's really up to you. Marjoram is a little bit more flexible for control. So, again, that spot's open, but I haven't been having any issues with it here. It just feels proactive to me right and half ruse again bonded boost base power by two so first one plays for six the second one plays for eight if we can get a third and a fourth then we're going to be pulling obviously one back for eight and then slamming down the other one for eight again like or if you switch the order one's ten whatever the case but these are really good point slams for four provision they have that added ability that i mentioned damage self by four put rain for two turns in the enemy row and then these are good heal targets for the passive leader, right? We talked about it. Discard target. Purify is really good if we want to purify something of ours that went tall, that um, is poisoned or whatever the case. If we want to purify one of our engines that gets locked early on, if we need to get rid of one of their defenders or whatever the case, if something of theirs has veil and we want to purify that, or I mean, it, it really just like it's situational, right? So good to have a purify, and I think for the price it is, it's worth it. I think Gremist might not be worth it at six, but that's just my personal preference. Why go Gremist when you can go Peller? This spot is very valuable to me, right? The five through six. So that's why we go Peller here. And then Crow Clans, we talked about them enough. So that's pretty much it in the video today. Like you saw, I have four games for you guys with live commentary for this one. So I'm gonna be playing the games and talking about them as the games happen and I enjoy playing that way. So expect a lot of my videos over the next week or so to be more of the live commentary format, okay? And uh, hopefully we have some more games for you in the next video as the server updates are taken care of and whatnot. But uh, I think that's pretty much all I gotta say for today. 
we'll see you tomorrow and i hope you enjoy the games give the deck a try and uh if you're new to the channel you like what you see drop a sub on the channel because i'm uploading every single day at 8 a.m eastern daylight time and i don't want you to miss out on content that can change the way you play the game so we'll see you soon all right so for the first game here we got white frost monsters and it's been so long since i played alchemy skellige it's been like six seven weeks at least it feels like it so i'm excited for this here probably put back one of these at least for now this is one of those things that i want to hold but i don't necessarily want to play right away you know what i mean so we're kind of looking for discards here so in that case we probably go and take either this back or maybe the peller because i don't think we're going to need it in the frost matchup at all sure I did make a frost deck recently and I found it was very competitive during the trial games that I had. So if you guys are looking to play frost, go check out my video from maybe a few days ago. And uh, definitely worth looking at. Makes you wonder if we should actually take that out. It's not a bad idea because we can recycle them, right? We could take back... Yeah. So they boost that, it's out of reach, then we're in trouble, I guess. Gives them one up on the engines. I'm hoping that they're struggling for proactivity here, so... Here, if they want to take Frost on this, we'll take Rain on them. It's kind of a nice little trade. That's fine. We'll go ahead and bond that up here. Keep it within reach, right? Makes you wonder if you want to go for the triple. I find with alchemy, we definitely want to be in a spot where... Okay, that's not bad. we can uh, push, right, in, in a second round. So we'll try and take it here, see if it's enough to keep us ahead or get us close to being ahead. And then if we can win card down, we can just go into second round card down, but with truffle, which is kind of nice. So they're running Foglets and their devotion. Okay, not like that's a problem, it's just... Uh, Observations. It's on the op. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you apply, just making sure. Because if I go and put stuff, I don't want to have problems. I do think we could probably play this down a little bit here. I don't think we're in a rush to click location just in case, but... Okay, that'll end it for that. 41 to 16. So that's kind of getting to the point where you can't come back from, right? Go ahead and pass there. And we just kind of hope that they would go for a bleed. I don't mind going tall in this matchup. You kind of want units to play as well. Like a throw card would be nice too. So... I fully intend on basically trying to round trap them. If they go and play anything, we're just going to take our full discards and go from there. We have really good point slams off the Freya's as well, right? And this is play, so we'll get the bonded effect again and get one of the half roos up to 10.
the hard part for them is if they're going to bleed, yeah. Okay. Kind of makes me not want to go just right in with the whole discard package because we want to sort of play around that a little bit. But if I start playing on the range row, then there's going to be things basically on both rows, right? Once we do discard, which plays into the Ard Geth. So it's probably still stacking melee. we should be fine. Burna is like really big tempo, right? Especially if we can draw into another card to discard. I'm sure there'll be something we can chuck away. We have a couple more targets left. Nice little engine here. We could probably clip one of them. So surely it's the Peller. It's a bit of an uphill battle, because if they go for point slams, then we have good tall removal options here. Yeah, we'll be alright, I think. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about here is I kind of want to use this. Yeah, because we don't want to have this, like, Toad Prince or something like that, or Natural Selection. We kind of want that to engine, because we got a few alchemies. This is kind of brick, though. Alright, so we're going to have to heat wave that, I think. That's probably the option. So it's probably the Freyas. There's no way they're doing it in two. And we should be good for the Druids, I think. We have the one here, we've got this to pull into one if we can draw that. We've got the rune stone. Okay. The heal value is like really nice in this matchup here. I could probably just get away with playing one card. Morkvark's kind of nice, but I kind of want to save it in case they have an Osril. That's probably the safest bet. Except that's a Druid, right? I think it's just the Morkvark that we play here just to be, just to be safe. So we preserve leader. Got the card up on him. If I can draw decently, then we should be fine. Okay, there's one. Doom's kind of useless here. I think we chucked that back. Crow Mother's actually really nice just to have it, right? Place for a pretty good amount of points at this point of the game. I don't think we'll be able to finish the match, though. <laughs> That's bad, bad. Okay. Is 
so if we're looking at four provision alchemies, it'll be something like this. So we have to play Crow Mother first. We'll just stack the row. I don't expect them to have punish. Okay. That's a Marjoram kill, surely, right? Last card's probably Osroll, though, so we could wait. Actually, they'll just spear tip anyways. So play an alchemy at four. It's probably going to be okay. Yeah, we should be all right here. Six. There we go. We need to boost all beasts. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah, it's last card, Osroll. We should just be fine. There it is. Not bad for game one. All right, and for the second game, we got Seneca Jackpot. And while I take my mulligans here, a little bit of a story time. So I received an email this morning from a company that I guess produces games. And they have a card game that they'd like for me to play for one of my videos. And uh, it brings up an important conversation because just trying to focus on both here. Put back the boost. Because, um, you know, Qseno is definitely a business, right? And uh, I want to make sure that I'm profitable within the business. However, I also want to make sure that I'm honest with my friends, being you guys, right? You put a lot of trust in me, making sure that, you know, I'm giving you my honest reviews and impressions of things. So... I'm looking to see what they're offering and like what the whole deal is with the game. But I'll never accept money to tell you guys that I like something I don't. So I'm I'm just trying to work out whether it's a let's play or if it's more of a review and what they're asking of me and whatnot. But uh, that's something that I'll touch more on if we can come to an agreement. But I just thought I'd let you guys know about that now. And, um, you know, if there's ever a sponsored post, obviously engagement on that helps quite a bit. So, you know, if you want to help me out, I line them up, you help me knock them down, and that's how we make it work. But uh, for now, let's start thinking about the first round here. It's been a while since I've seen a street urchin being played. Not doing too bad on the discards here. We could just go take the second. I don't think we're actually going to get our coral, right? We'll discard that. And I like this card engraved. This card engraved is really nice. Helps us set up Bard of the Sea a bit better. Uh, we don't really care for alchemy here, do we? Damage enemy. So it is this. Alright. That should be okay. We got like really good tempo on this play. <clears throat> so can they do it in three that's the big question here can they do it in three we can always go and maybe dish dish that play this get the heal it's kind of the advantage and then pass next turn i think that they're probably going to pass here at seven okay they don't this is probably going to be past the flora it's the only reason why they'd run this for the tag, but you can also do it with beggars. It's devotion. Hmm. I think we made a good choice there, passing. When in doubt, they're gonna have to spend quite a bit, go into round three with no carryover coin. Yeah. It's kind of what we like too, the long round. And a lot of the poisons are out of the way, so maybe they don't have the means to take care of some of our really tall plays. I think we're doing all right. What I'd like to see is Truffle on a pass. So we got 
spray is, which is okay. So that must just be sitting right at the bottom. Surely they won't play into the round. I think that they're just going to pass here. Yeah. We take any form of carryover we can get. So Crow Mother is going to be that when we take an alchemy card. And I think that's going to be it, right? Now we lose last save, but we have really good punish here. Little confused by the shakedown, though. I guess it's fine, but... I can't say I love Dwim. Or the Swallow. Freya times two, we don't really need it. Okay, it's probably the second. The great part is, is that we have, like, three of these in hand and ways to get them back. The bad part about it is that uh, we might might lose a couple of them. We'll see what we can do here. Safe at six, though, I think. And then we could try and cram down the third one, take a marjoram and call it. Okay. That's also a thing. I'm a little worried about poison, but I think we need to do this. What are the odds they have two fist techs in hand? <laughs> I think that's just the way it goes. We probably take this here then. Marils is definitely a possibility, which makes us like extremely vulnerable in the front row, but we'll just play into it and see how it goes. We've got this, we can go ahead and we can bond it with this one from Grave. And what did they play? They played the poison. It'd be nice if we had the Pellar, maybe they're just bluffing it. I think we do go with this. Messenger is nuts, actually. This is like really good synergy that was accidental. Okay, so they're not bluffing. It's real. <laughs> So far, not bad, though. We have a, a good 20-odd point lead. Okay. It's still probably that, and we still probably bond it, right? At this point in the match. So they've used Poison times 2. And they've used Marils, they've used the Junior. Like, there can't be anything left. But they have a Graydon as well. At this point, I'd rather just take the damage because it's looking pretty bad. They take out that card that's half our points. Caught from hands, horrible. 
It's the only spender that I see. I think it's going to have to be Morkvark, just to make sure it actually happens. Yeah, one more turn on the front row. I don't think it matters if they remove the 20. It's quite a big deal, though. You just take the heat wave on it and just hope for the best. Yeah, 22-point messenger we rolled off the Stribog, right? Massive amount of points. All right, so for the third game here, we got Tactical Decision Nilfgaard. And every time I see this leader, man, you can only expect, right? It's got to be something we don't really want to play into. I think a Purify is probably necessary. A Heat Wave is probably necessary. Dwim can go round one, I think. Uh, I can't say I love Sig the Freya's Blessing round one if we don't really have anything. And I also don't like two of these in hand. Okay. So it's likely going to be something like play Crow Mother, play a couple things, see what we could do. I kind of want a couple turns to see what they have going on. I don't anticipate us filling the row, but just to be safe, I'll put pretty much everything else we play in the back row. Take a discard here, see if we can find something better. It's gonna be something like that, I think we have to put back. It's not ideal, but we do have tempo that we can play to pass, right? I'm worried about taking Burna when we have a lot of cards we don't want to throw away. However, we're getting closer to the ones that we do, right? And they just took, what, a uh, Coda Weapons? That's not all bad, like, I'll take the card back. But uh, they are clogging right away, so I don't know if that's maybe them being onto something here, right? But still their turn, yeah. Just a clog and a rope. Yeah, it's probably we just take the burner. Okay, so uh, maybe Peller is not it because we do have through Defender, Heat Wave, whatever's behind it. But if they're like some Renew nonsense, that's also a problem. I just, uh, I don't necessarily want to tuck these back. I think we put back Peller. If I, um, we might actually regret this eventually, but we'll find out. Here, we'll put the Dwim away. It's unfortunate, but uh, it is what it is. I don't think I can play too deep into this round because we're running into these problems. Oh my gosh. At least we have pretty much everything that we want to take them down, basically, right? 16 this puts us up a little bit we're running out of space to to play before it gets kind of ugly i think we just pass on seven Realistically, we just need a couple things, right? Like, I'd be happy with maybe just even two. Like, I don't even think Coral's going to be a big game changer here. As long as we can get Truffle. Maybe Bride of the Sea. So what, they put Burna back in deck. Probably not the best card to stuff. Well, neither is Coral Mother. I thought about the reverse stuff for a second. I don't think it's worth it. We draw two, discard two. I'm 
gonna put that back. So we have some points we could play off the truffle and all that. Okay. This just looks like classic Colgrim. But if they're doing like a hyper thin clog, so far I'm not impressed because, you know, we'll be able to get out more with Burna here. They're gonna have to do a bit more for the clog. This tells me renew is possibility. I don't want to heat wave it either. if I heat wave it then they can do double Colgrim and it's still bad. It must be renew if they have bronze cards. Like um like, if they're running stuff like this, maybe it's to save provisions, right? Okay. We sort of have to go and play something like this here. I kind of value staying ahead at this point. Here's the leader. And then we'll stack the back row. I'm thinking go burn up pretty shortly here. See if we can draw well. I think we've established though, if they're renew, we probably lose. Otherwise, we probably win. And it's unfortunate that it comes at the expense of one card, right? If I roll a Stribog into a boat, that could be actually really cool. That's also a thing. Maybe that's what we aim for when it gets close. We're getting so unlucky with these in this matchup because I need... I need my druids, right? So it's heat wave, so maybe there is no renew. Maybe the actual play is to play Gedneth. clean. We were able to get rid of a lot of the clog too. So we could go pull the burn up back. That's a possibility, right? Because there is a chance it could pull some more good cards. 
I'm just trying to think. Maybe we don't do that right away. That's a bit better. If we're pulling that, it's going to be for a bonded... Okay. Yeah, I think that's the hand if we're going to get one. Let's float Coral. Coral's kind of nice, but I think if we're playing against Colgrim, it might even be good to go and take back the Burna. Right? Because then we get the extra... Okay, there's the Renew. You know what I mean? Like, it, it wouldn't really matter a whole lot. Okay, it's probably just that that we put. Then we get rid of two more cards. Yeah. So here's the line, okay? We take an offensive Marjoram on that. What's better than a dead noble? Two dead nobles. Yeah. We take the offensive Marjoram. Okay, so there's rain here. Brings us to... Five? Or we just do that. That's actually probably safer. Just get it out of the way. Get it over with. I wouldn't feel so bad if, like, because we had Crow Mother, right? Otherwise, I'd feel kind of guilty just overkilling it. But now it's gone forever. It was doomed. We just heat wave the Colgrim. Call it a day, I think. Even then, it's not really playing for a whole lot of points. Let's see if we can maybe roll something lucky. Damage three adjacent enemies by one. It's probably this. I'm glad we got this done without a Purify. Get the heal there. Because even if they have the Vipers, we should just be fine, right? But I think it's going to be Colgrim and Letho. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, let's just get this one over with. There you go. And moving on to another one here, I'm surprised we have another Frost matchup. It's really prominent right now. See, I knew there were some playable monsters. Okay, so we didn't really get good discards in the last game. I really want to make sure that's something we can get done right now. I don't think Purify is super important in this matchup, and I don't really want to pull into these, but I also don't really want to have this in round one either, so... All right, then we get two, I guess. It's probably the play to just dump one here. Maybe we take a discard, try and look for something else. I 
I think it's going to be one of those things where we have to play a little bit, get out of the round, and try and just recomp our hand for round 2-3. Because we do run the risk of pulling into some good cards and chucking them away. But uh, mind you, we do have a couple, right? We have three, and pulling into Coral is not bad either. I just don't want to have to chuck the Dwims again. Uh, it's Foggle. Maybe this is the same person. Maybe it is. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to let it go. These are so valuable to me. I think it's probably going to be something like this. Yeah, let's just dis swallow because this place for 10 points plus whatever we get off the double procs, yeah. We just got to get through one more turn, I think. I don't mind rolling something like uh, even this here to see. It's probably the Marjoram, right? Because we get the heal. The double heal. So, I, I don't feel like we have the pushing hand here. If I go in for something like this, maybe it's enough to get out of the round. But then again, it's not really a lot of points. It'll play for 10 points with this board state, which puts us up to 28, which is not really great. That rhymes. Don't really want to play this from hand, don't want to play this from hand, don't want to play this from hand. I think we pass. They'll probably go for the 2-0, and then we can just try and maybe have a short sweet round 3. Okay, so I really like the fact that we actually have the two Dwims plus the Truffle. That's going to be a lot of points for the round. Let's put back that for now. I think we still put back... The delirium teller's absolutely useless here. Like there won't be anything that we need to purify, I don't think. Is it a heat wave? It's probably a heat wave. Actually we can wait, we can wait, definitely. We just heat wave the spirit tip when it comes out. It's much better, I think. work on getting these bonded, I think. If I have to go Fakusha, we can go Fakusha into this one, and then just do it that way, but I think we want to bond both pairs. So their leader's out of the way, which is great. I think we should be decent. We should be kind of decent here. We'll take the heat wave. Which carries us ahead. Kinda. <laughs> kinda, sorta. 
we take i'm gonna take this early just because i want to be able to stay ahead on a pass i don't want to go card down that's the only rough position we put ourselves in here we missed some points because we need to set up but i think if they continue to play we defend with fakusha because it's getting kind of ridiculous right yeah we'll do that The nice part is that we could basically erase their entire back row, like that Foglet, no matter how tall it gets, is going to get reset with the Morph Arc, and I think that's going to be the best option, because if they are running Osril, it's not really impressive later on. So we know it's Devotion, we can go super tall. And then we just take Dwims and try to hold on to some carryover, I think. They would have played the first Foglet, that's good. Okay. So I kind of worry about... Okay, well, they played Ardgeth. I think we have to take this here. Just because the whole dominance play is kind of important. Yeah, we'll do that. Then we'll just take the rain, I think, just to deny it a bit more. I think they're going to be running out of ways to get Frost. Okay, the nice part is we don't have to play. This rain's really coming in clutch. It's almost like the whole rounds had rain on their side. I just want to see if maybe we can get away with playing Peller. I also kind of want to get rid of that Foglet, so maybe we click rain next turn. Just in case. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, there's two turns left in the game. That could be a big deal. We'll play this here, I think, right? Heals that one. Take the carryover. Foglet dies. And then they don't get dominance back. We should get a pass shortly, and hopefully we can just play Peller here. I don't think we're going to have to go all in. But it's hard to say. That's going to be for what, a wrath? Okay. We'll take a little bit of a defensive purify. It might actually be good. We have one druid, two with that. Hopefully we can pull into Gedneth because that's kind of like a win condition for us here. Okay. I think we did a pretty good job defending, even though we were really pushed from the round one. It kind of comes down to discards sometimes. If we don't get the good discards pulled off, then we, we run into problems. Okay. Okay. Play an alchemy from Grave. That's one. This could potentially pull a second, right? That pulls two. Okay. You know, I think we have to just say we're we're fortunate enough to have a hand as good as we have. Let's just play cards and see what happens, right? Toad Prince would be horrible. 
that's also kind of bad. Play alchemy from grave. It's going to have to be this. I think the play is actually to float this and look at some information. They used wrath, they used parasite. I don't think they have a way to remove that. And maybe an option to play on melee as well would have been better, but they probably take a mulligan back on the Ardgeth in round three that's this short. You would think. Okay, that's what we want to see. That's what I'm talking about. So, play bronze gets the proc here. Perfect. Right? Okay, then we can finish it off. I think we're good. And that's having missed like a couple things I would have liked to have as well. Um, play four. Okay, well, we're not going to get the rain, but at least we get the proc, right? And I think it doesn't matter. Let's just spread it out a little bit. Marjoram on, yeah, the force fine. There's no way. There we go. 